Hey guys, it's a wee snowy day outside, so I've got my pyjamas on and my wee cup of tea. And I wanted to chat to you guys about something that really struck me recently. So there's this new TV show on Netflix called um, The Cecil Hotel. It's the story of Elisa Lam. And Elisa Lam was a Vancouver woman who went down to California and disappeared seemingly disappeared. Um, I got goosebumps as soon as I watched the, the first episode. Um, they showed a video of the woman in an elevator that seemed a bit peculiar, but there was a mention that she had bipolar disorder. And as soon as I saw that video, I got, oh, I, I, I've got it now. I've got the tingles all up and down my spine. Um, it was so raw and so real to me and a little bit triggering, actually. Um, and the whole point in this video is that we, we have to spread awareness and education about mental illness and the complexity of mental illness, especially psychosis. Um, I believe that many, many people go missing or go hurt in the world that is the product of a psychotic episode and we need to talk about it more we need to have that open awareness and education and, and people need to understand what to look for they need to understand what the signs are it's just like oh my god like i don't even know how to describe it it's the the most surreal experience um it is kind of like a movie it is kind of like a okay or talk you through. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm getting carried away. So I told you a little bit about my experience with psychosis. Um, I had left my work. I had left my job. I was quite stressed out. There was a very negative working environment and, and one of the staff members was bullying uh, the team and just not doing the job that she was asked to do. It was a whole palava, palava, palava. <laughs> Um, anyway, uh, I quit my job and I started freelancing, which was going great. Everything seemed fine, positive, happy, um, had lots of flexibility, lots of freedom. And then I took on two contracts um, and for some reason, these people formed identities in my, in my brain. Um, so looking back i had a, another blog at the time called rosie t and looking back on the post my mind had already started to kind of unravel to some extent um, a lot of my posts were talking in tongues and riddles um, i kept pointing out signs and meanings of things that i saw um it was just yeah very interesting time and i had no idea what was going on one of my friends took me aside and spoke to me about the idea of me having bipolar disorder and I I didn't talk to that friend for, for quite some time. I, I thought, who are you to call me crazy? You know, like, what's it to you? There's absolutely nothing wrong with me. And, and if anything, I thought it was a little bit magic. I was like, woohoo, I'm alive with human connection and spirit and thought I had a little bit of, you know, sorcery and, and yeah, magic in me. Um, don't get me wrong, I still believe I have a little bit of magic in me. I think we all have a little bit of magic in us. But um, at that point, it was an alarming amount of magic. Uh, yeah, so these two people that I was doing the contracts for took meaning, lots of meaning in my life. Um, I've never been super religious, but I was brought up with a religious background. Um, and during my psychosis, uh, the religious theme was very prominent, which is interesting, actually. Um, we've been learning about it in class that different societies and different cultures and regions of the world, the psychosis is very prominent to the history and context of that region or continent. And so for, for those in, in the European countries, religion is a very prominent psychotic realm when people have these episodes. So anyway, I believed that one of these men was God and one of these men was the devil. And 
my whole world changed. Completely changed. My reality was flipped on its ass. I remember vividly, so as I said, my, my mind kind of began to spiral. Um, there was a, some very extreme moments, but one of the one of the bigger moments I remember is I was convinced that the devil, this gentleman in my life, was coming to kill me uh, because I had done something in my past that I believed um, was my undoing. I believed I was going to be taken away for that sin. So I was in my house, in my apartment, and I could hear him. I could hear his footsteps downstairs, so I was two floors up. Somehow I could hear him coming through the, the apartment building door, walking up the stairs, hear his footsteps coming along the hallway. I could hear him cocking a gun. Um, I ran into the hallway in the apartment building and threw my hands up in the air and was like, take me, I'm sorry, just take me, kill me. Um, my neighbors, I just, yeah, uh, kudos to my neighbors for, for helping me through such what must have been puzzling times to them. Uh, these episodes continued. Um, at one point I believed I was an angel. I, not at one point, for six whole months I believed I was an angel. To the extent that I almost jumped off a rooftop in a white dress, thinking I could fly with the angels. Um, again, I thought that was me being taken up to heaven and being accepted for my past sins. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. So anyway, looking back on this Netflix TV show, it just really reminded me of the intricacies of psychosis and how the mind and reality takes on a whole different form. This young woman, Eliza Lam, must have, as far as I'm concerned, been hearing some voices and seeing, believing things that weren't particularly real, which led her to drowning in a water tank on a roof. And you know, the whole series, everybody's like, she's been murdered. Like, there's no way she's done this to herself. But in that initial episode, I knew right away what had happened. I knew that that false reality had grasped her to the point of death. And I was so close, so close. It actually freaks me out how close I was over that six months period so many times between God and the devil telling me what to do, I I came so close. I remember running around my apartment building. Um, God had told me that if I wanted the rest of the world to regain the belief, to regain hope, and to continue religion as it is known, I had to kill myself. And... You know, you talk about divine intervention and, and whatnot. Every single time I tried to kill myself, someone stepped in, some magnificent, beautiful stranger, or maybe it was, maybe it was an act of God, but someone always stepped in and saved my life. And I will be forever, forever grateful and forever thankful for that. The whole experience was electrifying. I've spoken about it to my friends and, and my peers that, my whole body, sensations, feelings, emotions were, it was like an electrical current pulsing through me. It just, it's unlike anything you ever experience in your life. I don't think, you know, there's no, the, my words aren't doing it justice. It's the most, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it, guys. It's just, yeah. Psychosis is so fascinating and it would be, you know, really cool if we could do more research and more 
learning about it, but it's one of those things that we're never actually going to be able to have in a controlled environment or in a place. I don't think so. I don't think there's any way we could do kind of measured testing or measured research on that. Maybe there has been already. Maybe I'll look into that, but it feels like something that's so fleeting and so unruly that I don't think we could watch it in action. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But anyway, yeah, this TV show really got me in the feels because it was so close to my own experience and made me just think how lucky I am to, to have survived death in that regard. Wow. And I just feel for that poor woman's family, just she had bipolar disorder and the signs were there and her sister spoke about um, her ups and downs over the years and how it was kind of part of her life that she had these episodes. And yeah, I guess looking back, my whole life has been made up of that. Psychosis with, was the kind of culmination of many years of ups and downs and highs and lows and ebbs and flows and I never knew what psychosis was. I wasn't prepared for it. I had no understanding of how it could play out or what was even happening at the time and I believe that's why we do need more education. We need more awareness. People need to be able to see the signs for themselves and for their loved ones. I, yeah, I was walking down the street talking to strangers and I can remember I was so set on, I had to see the light. That was, that was the theme. I had to see the light. So I would stop strangers in the street and stare into the white parts of their eyeballs. I couldn't look at anything else. I just had to always look at the white parts because that's what God was telling me to look to the light. I remember one evening I walked into the ocean fully dressed because I was following the sea foam. The sea foam was white and this was my calling. I had to go follow the light and that led me into the ocean. And, and luckily enough, a couple of, once again, innocent strangers on a boat stopped me and yeah, wow, 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 wow. And so many similar stories of psychosis, as I was saying with the regional and, and cultural significances across the world it's we have to get all these stories out we have to combine them and see what the common themes are we have to see like the patterns and the yeah i'm so curious to learn more and more about psychosis and, and more people's experiences and stories because i think that's the only way we're going to really really understand this phenomenon i would call it actually Wow. Anyway, any who's else, I'm going to drink my tea. I can't believe how far I've come. Six months in that state of mind. Six, I was going to say terrifying months, but I'll say amazingly terrifying months because part of it was wonderful. You know, I do sometimes have my days where I go, ah, oh, to feel like that again, you know, I, I now and again, not too often, but now and again, I miss the buzz of mania. I miss that feeling of pure, raw electricity and aliveness. That's not a word, is it? Aliveness. Well, I just got that song in my head. Alive, alive, oh, alive, alive, oh. <laughs> okay, getting off track. I... I'm so proud that I made it back to reality. I know a lot of people don't. I am so grateful and thankful that I made it back to reality. But I'm also scared of the day I go back there. It's not something I welcome. Um, maybe I'd have a little bit more of a steer on it this time because I know a little bit more about it, but I don't think it's worth the risk. 
Steve called me from the store and the video cut out, so I can't actually remember where I was. I think I was talking about how I don't want to go back to psychosis. Um, as I was saying earlier, for me, it was really magical and mystical, and I was quite happy with that at the time until I realized what was wrong and how dangerous the experience was and how many risky paths that led me down. However, now I'm quite happy with the belief that some of it was magic and some of it was a mental illness. I'm happy that I rely on medication now to stop me from going back there. I am grateful that I had the experience. I think it showed me the other side of life um, that I was missing. I was very pessimistic, very scared and negative and always premeditating the worst of the situation and the worst of people. I grew up believing that I was worthless and I was undeserving of love or happiness and psychosis really lifted that veil and showed me that humanity can be wonderful and be beautiful and can be caring and can be loving and I soaked up and relished every moment of that during psychosis. That was the good parts of it for me. But as I mentioned before, there was lots of quite frightening parts. The the devil and and the trying to jump off roofs and I sold all my belongings. I moved into my car. God had told me that I had to go to Nova Scotia, New Scotland, to find new Natalie. Now, Nova Scotia is on the complete opposite side of the country from where I live. So it took me perhaps four and a half, five weeks to get there in the car. Me, my car, my dog, no road map, no idea where we were going. Um, the only reason we ever stopped, which was actually many a time, but it was when God would tell us to stop. So for example, when we left the island, I was crying, I was upset. We got the ferry over to Vancouver. I was just, yeah, I was very emotional. And then God said, I'm going to give you hope. And about 10 minutes later, a road sign popped up for a town called Hope. And of course I had to stop. God told me that's where I was supposed to be. And that was the entirety of my journey. That was every couple of days or once a week or the duration is irrelevant really, but God would tell me where to stop. God would tell me which people to talk to, which sometimes were good people and filled me with happiness and more of that electricity I had come to know. No, known, come to have known. Oh, I'll get your English right, Natalie. <laughs> um, but other times it was bad. Other times I met really bad people and um, wound up in, in really dangerous situations. And that was the devil part of it. But yeah, I think watching this TV show really affirms for me that we do need to talk about this more. We do need to, we do need to open up the realm of understanding for those with and without mental illness. We need to find those commonalities and work towards helping people in those situations, you know? I once sadly looked at those people that were walking around the street talking to themselves and shouting things and throwing things as weird and crazy and none of us are far from that none of us are far from losing that reality and stepping into something different yeah maybe it's more likely for someone like myself who has bipolar disorder but it's not far away from any of us no nope. might just take one stressful situation one day of too much of something we could all be there anyway that was quite a deep chat again wasn't it i feel like my videos are really deep and really like 
Not in a great way, not saying it in a good way. I think they're super serious sometimes. But anyway, it's snowing outside. It is still snowing. Snow in February, it's supposed to be camping season. It is actually. Many a time I've went camping in February. But um, little Millie, we took little Millie out. She's from Arizona, so I don't know how often she's seen the snow. She's bouncing about in the snow. And the snow is like up to her shoulders. It's pretty cute. Sandy is still in bed because she's a little lazy chewingy. She will wake up at two or three o'clock in the afternoon, get some food, and then go back to sleep. Dog after my own heart, I tell ya. Anyway, we're gonna have a nice chill day. I want to record another video. I want to record a Q and A video. Steve is gonna help me. And then tomorrow is Valentine's Day and Steve has got some wonderful three course meal planned. He's actually just braved the snow and trudged up to Thrifties to get some beef tenderloin because beef carpaccio is one of my favorite dishes. So he's gonna make that for me tomorrow. Woohoo! I'm so loved. Oh, what a nice guy. Anyway, guys, it's been a pleasure as always. Hope you've learned a little bit about psychosis. I hope we can work together to break down stigma, spread awareness, and make things a little easier for everybody. Take care.